As part of the Totally Thames Festival in September, we organized three mudlarking exhibitions in collaboration with the Thames Festival Trust. Over 50 mudlarks displayed their personal collections in three different exhibitions in different locations. Many of the mudlarks were displaying their collections for the first time in public, so it was a unique opportunity to see their private collections assembled over many years. In the exhibitions, we included the widest range of mudlarks, from relatively new beginners to seasoned veterans who had been mudlarking for several decades. The ages of the mudlarks ranged from 12 years old to over 80 years old. The exhibitions really brought the mudlarking community together. It was a great opportunity to meet many mudlarks and see their collections, which were carefully and meticulously curated. The chairman and many members of the Society of Thames Mudlarks also display their historically significant collections. Thousands of historical artifacts were on public display, many of them for the first time. There were an incredibly wide range of artifacts covering millions of years of British history. Fossils were the oldest artifacts on exhibit, and there were many prehistoric flint tools on display, which were handcrafted by some of the earliest Londoners who lived along the River Thames. Celtic, Roman, Saxon, Viking, Medieval, Tudor, Stuart, Georgian, Victorian, and modern artifacts were also on display. It was simply mind-blowing to see and hold some of these ancient artifacts. As part of the exhibition, professional photographer Hannah Smiles displayed large-scale portraits of many mudlarks along the River Thames. We also organized guided mudlarking tours with the Thames Explorer Trust and historic river walks with the Emery Walker Trust and William Morris Society. everyone, I just arrived at St. Paul's Cathedral and I'm looking forward to the mudlarking exhibition today. It's going to be great to see everyone's personal collections in this iconic venue. It was an incredible experience to display our mudlarking collections in St. Paul's Cathedral. It's one of the most historic and iconic buildings in Britain. The cathedral has played an important role throughout British history. We were very privileged to hold this exhibition within this beautiful historic setting. Some of the oldest artifacts were displayed by veteran mudlark Alan Murphy. Woolly mammoth teeth, prehistoric flint tools, a Bronze Age mattock, and a medieval bone ice skate are some of his best finds from the River Thames. I absolutely love seeing the historic glass bottles and stoneware jugs found by Michael Knapp, Dean Budden, Joe Allen, and Jay Sisu from the River Thames Mudlarking Finds Facebook group. Their collections of clay pipes were also mind-boggling. The figurative clay pipes are so beautiful and demonstrate the creativity of the pipe makers centuries ago. I especially enjoyed holding the unusual bone artifacts discovered by Caroline Nunnally. On the left hand side is a Momente Mori artifact carved out of bone depicting a woman's face on the front and a skeleton's face on the back. On the right hand side is a 16th century bone ear scoop carved in the shape of a unicorn. How cool is that? Attention. 
The woolly rhinoceros skull found by Stefano was one of the most unusual and ancient artifacts on display during the exhibition. Nick Stevens displayed an incredible range of artifacts he discovered in the Thames. Some of the highlights were a prehistoric megalodon shark's tooth, stunning figural clay pipes, decorated cufflinks, shoe buckles, fossils, book clasps, padlocks, and many more items. The Victorian porcelain doll fragments were my favorite. Many colorful beads and interesting artifacts were displayed by Flory Evans, Tommy Donnellan, and Alessio Ciccone. These are some of the medieval pilgrim badges and pewter artifacts found by mudlark Mark Peros. His collection of complete pen floor tiles was incredible to see. Stuart Wyatt from the Museum of London was also part of the exhibition and helped identify the artifacts which members of the public brought in for identification. Mudlarking duo Philly Gumbo and Judy Hazel also displayed their wonderful collection of artifacts. The historic padlocks in Judy's Roman brooch were definitely my favorites. I simply love this 17th century seal matrix found by Kevin James Dyer. He stamped a letter with hot wax to show us how it would have been used. Kevin's display cases were beautifully curated and labeled. Tim's mother was the oldest mudlark who participated in the exhibition. She is holding a photo of herself digging a large hole many years ago. Stephanie's grandson was the youngest visitor during the exhibition. It was an awesome three days here at St. Paul's Cathedral. What an iconic building. The historic Company of Cutlers is located a short walk away from St. Paul's Cathedral in central London. Located in Warwick Lane, the historic hall is home to the cutlers who have been practicing their craft in London from at least the 2nd or 3rd century AD. Although cutlers traded in all manner of cutting instruments, it was their skill at producing fighting weapons that brought them wealth and prosperity. A guild of cutlers has existed in the city of London since the 13th century. In 1416, Henry V granted the company its first royal charter. Built in the 19th century, the interior of the historic hall is a beautiful work of art. The oak timber paneling and monumental staircase display the grandeur and wealth of the cutlers. Their emblem of an elephant surmounted by a castle is featured in many locations throughout the building. Graham de Hume was the star of the show because of his generous contribution to Cutler's Hall. Last year, he donated almost 900 knives to the Worshipful Company of Cutlers. These knives were all found in the River Thames over several decades, and they are now on permanent display in Cutler's Hall. 
This is the ultimate goal of mudlarking, to assemble a historically important collection of artifacts and donate them to a museum or institution where they can be displayed and researched for many generations to come. Graham also displayed his collection of medieval and post-medieval keys, horseshoes, and many other artifacts. I was green with envy when I got to hold his complete bellamine jug, which he found in the River Thames. That's still one of the top things on my bucket list. Monica has a wonderful collection of beautiful historic artifacts. Some of them are truly unusual and rare. I especially like her old machete, a bayonet from a rifle, and her collection of animal skulls. Have you ever smelled history? Monica gave visitors a unique chance to smell the leather shoes she has found in the Thames. Her ancient Roman oil lamp was also one of the best artifacts on display. Marie showed visitors her wonderfully eclectic mix of artifacts from the Thames. Ed Bucknell showed off some of his astonishing collection of ancient Roman artifacts, which he discovered and recovered from the Thames. I especially enjoyed seeing the almost complete Roman pots and vessels. It's a miracle that these fragile vessels survive for over 1,600 years at the bottom of the river without getting completely smashed. Mudlark Stephen Camp brought several of his favorite treasures to show us in Cutler's Hall. His gold signet ring from the 16th century depicts two rabbits being chased by a dog. The gold button in the shape of a Tudor rose is an incredible piece of Tudor craftsmanship. In addition to the mudlarking exhibition, the Cutlers displayed some of the extraordinary artifacts in their own collection. I especially enjoyed seeing their Tudor knives with delicately carved ivory handles depicting people from the 16th century. It was an incredible privilege to display our mudlarking collections in this historic venue. The Chiswick Pier Trust is located directly on the Thames Path along the River Thames in West London. This stretch of the river is very calm and serene. It was an absolute privilege to display our mudlarking collections directly on the edge of the river. The gallery space spilled out onto the Thames Path, which created a vibrant atmosphere for guests arriving at the exhibition. Sam Beethoven has found a vast array of fossils in the River Thames. Her collection is literally millions of years old. With a lot of patience, Christine Fernbank painstakingly assembled a bellamine jug using the broken sherds she had collected along the River Thames. It was a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, and the result is simply amazing. Anna has a beautiful collection of colorful Hindu statuettes portraying many deities. 
they are evidence that the Thames is still considered to be a sacred river. This is a Victorian leather shoe which was found by David Hodgson. It's amazing that the shoe still has its original leather laces. Also, the steel studs and horseshoe are still fixed to the bottom of the sole. One of the youngest mudlarks to display their collections was my son Jaden, who is 12 years old. He proudly showed visitors his favorite finds, including a 16th century silver coin from King Henry VIII. <laughs> Over the past year, Lucas has found over 350 pieces of the famous Dove's type. This was the first time ever that they have been displayed in public. Lucas has collected almost all the letters in the alphabet. These incredible rings were found by Lucas. Each ring is so colorful and unique. I especially like the turtle ring, which has been encrusted with gemstones. Father and son duo Steve and Jack go mudlarking together and have amassed a large collection of historic artifacts. The Victorian bottles illuminated with fairy lights were very cool. I especially liked the spinning ink bottles, which was a very creative way to display their finds. Author and pottery expert Richard Hemery displayed a wide variety of pottery throughout the ages. He also helpfully identified pottery sherds which visitors brought to the exhibition. Artist Mark Soden had a gorgeous display case full of stunning pottery. I especially enjoyed seeing his artistic photos of spinning pottery. Joe Cook has been a mudlark for many years and has assembled a wide array of stunning artifacts which she has recovered from the River Thames. One of her oldest and most precious artifacts is a Roman intaglio which would have been mounted in a signet ring. I absolutely love the cute little cherub who is guarding the bowl of exquisite buttons. It was great to see Tobias Neto's great collection and hear more about the incredible Victoria Cross medal he discovered in the Thames a few years ago. The medal has been acquired by the National Army Museum in London. <laughs> The virtual mudlarking machine was one of the highlights of the exhibition in Chiswick. The machine was developed by artist Jess Wolpert. Mudlark Anna Borzello kindly showed visitors how to use the machine and experience mudlarking virtually. It was an absolute hit. And you found a bullet casing and you found a sign of a rifle. Well done. Oh, yeah. Let's try again. What do you think time? Oh my goodness! Do you know what those are? I can't believe how good you are! You found a whole handful of Roman tesserae the first time you went down. Oh. That is incredible. It was nice to meet several mudlarks at the exhibition who I'd only previously met online or spoke to very briefly on the foreshore. The mudlarking community in London is truly special with so many wonderful people who are passionate about London's history and archaeology. Their personal collections of artifacts are very diverse, just like the people who found them. Special thanks to the Thames Festival Trust for giving us the unique opportunity to hold the mudlarking exhibitions during the month-long Totally Thames Festival in London. During the exhibitions, which lasted five days, we had almost 3,000 visitors.
The exhibitions were organized by Nick Stevens and me on behalf of the Thames Museum Trust. I would also like to thank St. Paul's Cathedral, the Worshipful Company of Cutlers, and the Chiswick Pier Trust for kindly opening their doors and allowing us to display our mudlarking collections in these iconic and historic venues in London. We are very grateful for the 50 mudlarks who participated in the mudlarking exhibitions. Thank you so much. Special thanks to the Thames Explorer Trust for providing guided mudlarking tours during the exhibitions. I'd like to also thank Mallory Horrell from the Emory Walker Trust and William Morris Society for providing the insightful and informative walking tours along the river in historic Hammersmith. Thanks also to our great volunteers who kindly looked after our visitors. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing the mudlarking exhibitions. If you would like to learn more about the Thames Museum project, please visit our website at www.thamesmuseum.org. Thank you.